Hi, my name is Scott Shuttleworth and welcome to this week's Video Insight. Today I'm going to present a brief overview of the new home construction market in Australia and analysis will extend to two groups, land developers and home builders, and I'll introduce each in turn. Now, land developers are entities who buy land from the government or from other third parties and put in the required infrastructure, for example, water and sewage. They also perform tasks such as land clearing. The result is developed land which is fit for a house to be built on. Now, this is a capital intensive process where there can be long periods between the initial investment and the payback of capital, and hence profit. Profit margins will rise and fall for these firms, subject to the demand for developed land from property buyers and the supply of land from other competing developers in neighbouring regions. Turning to our next group, home builders, who are the entities that will construct the house on the land once it is developed. Profitability for these firms in this segment is dependent on prices for similar homes of a comparable location, size and quality, as well as the cost of building materials and labour. Capital intensity for these firms can also be high, however payments are often sought from the home buyer at agreed points in the construction process to abate this issue. We recently took a look at one home builder, Simmons Group Limited. Now, Simmons runs two businesses, one which constructs new homes and another which educates those looking to enter various trades in construction. The business earns very slim net profit margins of around 1% to 1.5%. Such slim margins mean that small changes in revenue or operating expenditures can lead to very big changes in profitability. In fact, we noted that a 10% drop in housing construction volumes in FY12 for this company led to about a 70% net dro 70 drop in profitability. We also consider it possible that the firm's FY14 profits are being supported by property prices broadly considered to be high. On the other hand, as I said, it's true that with near 1% margins, small marginal improvements can lead to big changes in the valuation. That is, if you go from 1% to 2% margins, your profit doubles, whilst your cost of goods sold or your operating expenditures have barely moved. Hence, there could be a case where earnings soar and shareholders are rewarded. Its education business is growing with revenues of $4 million in FY14, expected to surge to about $20 million in FY15. However, we wonder whether this is sustainable given the low barriers to entry and regulatory issues currently in the education sector. Now, this sector is currently under a Victorian and a national review by their respective governments, and there's the ever-present risk that changes in legislation may hamper future business prospects. Now, we're not a negative group of individuals, and we honestly hope that Simmons does well for its shareholders. However, in short, we at Montgomery did conclude from analysis that our funds were not suited to this kind of investment for the mentioned reasons. That's all I have for this week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you next time.